First, let's look at the speed announcer settings. Menu, Applications, CTU Auto Throttle. Now normally I use switch SA, a three position switch for this, but for the purposes of the video, it was easier to set up on SF. So with SF down, you'll see that the announcement enable is off and the continuous announcement is off. If I put SF to the middle position, then I get an enabling of the automatic announce that varies by speed changes. And if I put Sarah. it all the way up, you can hear Sarah. I get a continuous announcement Sarah. every two seconds. Zero. I'll go back to automatic. Next setting down speed change scale factor. Uh, that's approximately the change in speed that will cause the interval of announcements to vary. The more the speed changes, the more frequently it will announce. The less, fre the, less the speed changes, the more frequency, frequently it will announce. The V ref speed, uh, roughly 1.3 times the stall, stall speed you can set here. Uh, once it goes below V ref, it'll call the speed out uh, it by default every two seconds, but you can change that. Speed max warning at 200, which is either miles per hour or kilometers. And then there's an airspeed calibration multiplier if you'd like to apply a calibration to your pitot tube and a selection of miles per hour or kilometers per hour. All right, let's take a look at the screen now. We'll simulate a speed by using 35. a syringe on the pitostatic speed, system and you can see the speed growing. Per hour. Speed 146 kilometers per hour. And there's a delay speed, in announcing. 194 kilometers per hour. Okay, and you can see that as the speed changes, it announces more frequently. And once the speed holds, uh, it'll wait if there's no change in speed. Um, as long as 20 times the minimum setting of two seconds or 40 seconds. If I drop the speed back, speed 182 I'll start getting kilometers per again. hour. Speed 119 kilometers per hour. Speed 75 kilometers per hour. V ref speed. There's my V ref speed. Stall warning. And a stall warning with a stick shaker. And back down to zero. Let's take a look at auto throttle operation. So right now you can see in the middle of the screen, the state is zero, the auto throttle is off. We have a set point for the purposes of this demo connected to the, uh, the P7 control, the knob on the front of the transmitter. And you can see that I can set that to various speeds. And I have a simulated airspeed of 133 kilometers per hour um, by pressurizing the pitot system. 158 kilometers per hour. You'll also see that there's no announcement while I'm moving the set speed, but as soon as speed, the set speed settles, 133 kilometers per hour. Auto throttle set point, 165 kilometers per hour. So as soon as I stop changing the set point, it'll announce it to me because as a pilot, I can't look down at the screen. You'll also see that it pops up an information message on the screen, which also puts the same message in the log file, which is very useful. Okay, let's take a look at the auto Speed, throttle itself. 133 kilometers per hour. You can see that the throttle is connected to the throttle stick. As I move the stick up and down again, our auto throttle is in state zero, which means that it's off. So suppose that I'm cruising along at about 38% throttle. I've got an airspeed of 133 kilometers per hour and a set point of 165, and I decide to turn the auto throttle on. So I flip my guarded switch to the on position and you'll see that the state goes to one, which means it's waiting to arm. And then if I auto take the throttle, throttle to zero, it'll go to state two, which means the auto throttle is on. And you can see that it's raising the throttle because Speed, we're below the set point. If I slowly reduce hour. the set point below the current speed, you'll auto see the throttle. throttle set point, 121 kilometers per hour. You'll see the set point um, is now below the speed and the throttle is dropping. I've set the integrator and the proportional gain very low to facilitate this demo. 145 kilometers per hour. Auto throttle set point. And as I go further over, the throttle comes up more quickly. I drop below, point. the throttle comes down. 158 kilometers per hour. Auto throttle set point. 107 kilometers per hour. Auto throttle set point. 
Now, as I move the, uh, the set point around and you see the throttle dropping, you can see the Auto integral term and the proportional term moving. Kilometers per hour. And you can see them moving back when I raise the set point. You can Auto see that error gauge in point. the middle. 166 kilometers per so hour. So this is informative to help you to tune the PID feedback loop. Now you'll also see that if I'm cruising along and I'm simulating a case where I'm very close to being locked in feedback at about 133 kilometers and I turn the auto, auto throttle, throttle off, canceled. you'll see briefly that a blue arrow exists and as I raise the throttle to meet that blue arrow, I get a beep. So the blue, the blue arrow on the dial, Speed, the blue needle, 133 kilometers per hour. The blue needle on the dial is going to be the last position where the auto throttle was set. And again, as the pilot, you can't look at that; your spotter can. But if you cancel the auto throttle, you then have to bring the throttle up from idle. And so, when your throttle stick matches your last CTU auto throttle position, you'll get that beep that the pilot can hear when the throttle uh, needle touches the, the blue position of the last throttle set by the CTU auto throttle. Just a couple more points. Uh, so let's say we're cruising along 66% throttle and we have our set point airspeed very close. Notice Speed, we're in state zero. 134 kilometers per hour. State zero, so the auto throttle is off. Um, I'm gonna flip the auto throttle on and you'll see that it jumps to state one, which is armed and ready, but it's not on yet because I haven't taken the stick to idle. Now, as soon as you note that the uh, throttle and the kilometers per hour readings are black, as soon as I Auto take throttle enabled. the throttle to zero, you'll see that those numbers turn red, going along with state two, indicating the auto throttle is on. And if I drop, um, if I raise my set point here, you'll see the auto throttle auto coming throttle up with it. 166 kilometers per hour. Speed, 133 kilometers per hour. Okay, you'll see it coming up. Then if I drop the set point, you'll see it coming back down. And then once again, um, if we turn the- 115 the, kilometers per hour. If we turn the guarded switch I'm using for CTO auto throttle to off, as we did in the other video, it will turn it off. Uh, the other way we can do this is if we raise the throttle stick uh, Auto throttle set point. 10 clicks from zero, you'll hear the beep. Kilometers per hour. Auto throttle canceled. So you'll see that the auto throttle is canceled when the throttle comes up maybe to about a quarter stick. That's a safety feature. The Speed, auto throttle is. 133 kilometers per hour. The auto throttle is designed to be used with the throttle stick at zero as a safety feature. But if you do bring the stick up to about quarter throttle, it will cancel the auto throttle. And here you can see that our our numbers on throttle and speed are back to uh, being printed in black, indicating that the auto throttle is off. Uh, one last thought on the tuning. You might want to enlist a suitably skilled spotter uh, to help you as you make uh, changes like this. Your response, your setup will be a little bit different every time. You'll need to tune these parameters differently but you can watch how the proportional integral and derivative terms vary. The proportional responds to an instantaneous difference. The integral drives the error signal to zero over time, and the derivative uh, can provide some damping. But in a feedback like the loop like this one, the derivative has a fairly small effect unless you turn it up too large. And then the last point I want to mention is you've noticed that a lot of the state changes on the auto throttle get a pop-up uh, message on the screen. Again, that's not so much for the pilot, but those pop-up messages, those system messages also get stuck into the log file. Uh, also put into the log file are these values of PI and DIC on the screen. They're in there as CTU Propo, CTO Integ, and CTO to Deriv. And so if you want to actually look at your log files, you'll actually see the points where your auto throttle is enabled and disabled, and you'll be able to actually look at the three terms that are being graphed as bars along the bottom of the screen. Once again, can help you with tuning your PID setup. For the purposes of the demo here on tuning the PID, I've got a special test version of the program set up so that it drives a servo that actually uh, uh, drives the plunger of a small hypodermic syringe that creates variations in, um, in air pressure for the pedostatic sensor. So it's a way of creating an artificial feedback loop around the sensor. So let's start out with some very modest factors, 0.4 for proportional, 0.8 for integral, 
and a very small factor for derivative. And let's jump back out to our telemetry screen and you can see that the loop is locked here at 107. Let's turn our P7 knob and you see the loop responding. Uh, the servo, which is being driven by the throttle output, is running the plunger in and out on a small hypodermic syringe to create um, the ability to close the feedback loop, as I said before. We drop that down and you can see the loop responding. So this is um, going to be obviously different for each airplane. Each airplane will have different inertia, turbines will have different responses, but these modest values are a good place to start. Let's see what happens if we turn the p-factor up to uh, 1.5. So we'll save our settings. We'll get back out. We'll bring our throttle up, turn our feedback loop on, drop our throttle down. And you can probably hear the servo going crazy in the background. You can see that we have too much proportional gain and the loop is actually oscillating back and forth and back and forth. So this is obviously not a good place for us to be. All right, here we are in intermediate setting, uh, proportional 0.8, integral 1.0, and we're leaving the derivative term small. So let's go back out to our telemetry screen, and we're locked. Let's try moving the speed. And you can see that while it's not oscillating, it is a bit underdamped. Uh, it settles rather quickly, but you can see some fairly crazy gyrations in the throttle. Uh, so this is a case where I think we've got our, still have got our proportional gain a little bit too high. I'd like to show you another feature of the CTU Auto Throttle. We can go in <clears throat> to a flap menu here, and for any number of different flap positions here, I've just defined one, two, and three, uh, plus 100, zero, minus 100, a three position switch I use for flaps. And for each of the flap settings, I've told it 109 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and 90 kilometers. And so when the variable speed knob that we've been talking about, the P7 knob for this demo, is set below 40 kilometers an hour, <clears throat> the auto throttle will then look to the flaps and speed settings. So let's go back, check our PID settings. We're back to some fairly mild PID settings, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 0 0.05. Uh, we'll make sure that we save all of our settings. And we'll go back to our screen, and you can see we're sitting here locked. And once again, as I change the set point on P7, you'll see the feedback loop responding. You can follow the proportional integral and derivative factors on the bars at the bottom of the screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the P7 control all the way to zero. My flap switch is in the up position, so I'll drop that down and you'll see that it'll pop back up to that 109 kilometer setting and it'll regulate my speed at 109 kilometers. Uh, now let me bring my flap setting down to the mid-flap point set point of 100 and you see it settling very quickly to 100 and then finally taking it down to 90. And really I think while the auto throttle is very useful, it's really most useful in controlling speeds in the landing pattern for uh, full flaps, partial flaps, and no flaps in the landing pattern. Now, those of you with sharp eyes will have noticed a setting in the CTU setup called minimum throttle to use. Uh, and uh, my strong recommendation is that you uh, fly your plane right at the stall speed. Find the throttle setting that, that just keeps your aircraft above stall. Uh, note the percentage of throttle that that is and go ahead and set that parameter to the minimum throttle to use because it's possible that as the PID feedback loop works and we switch back and forth from knob regulated to flap regulated, the throttle could drop uh, below that level and, in, in, and it could occur when the, um, the CTU is turning on or off because it has to have the stick at idle for safety. And so as an overriding safety feature, if you never let the CTU bring the throttle below that speed that it takes to stall your aircraft, um, then it will never be the case that the CTU will drive the throttle below the stall speed. So I've set it for 20%. So if I take it down here from one set point to another, it reacts normally. I take it down a little bit further. Now, if I take it down to this point, you'll see that even though the set point is below, the throttle is held at 20%. So it works normally, except that it will not take the, the, the CTU will not drive the throttle below that 20%, which I'm imagining is the setting that just holds our aircraft in level flight 
um, just above the stall. Okay, so we're in cruise flight with our flaps up 157 kilometers an hour. We decide that we want to use the CTU auto throttle to help us with our landing setup. So the first step we're going to take is we're going to drop our uh, speed control knob. And again, you see we're at state two, the numbers are red, so the, the auto throttle is regulating. We drop our set point to zero, and you'll see that since it's below 40, the auto throttle looks to our flap switch, and we've got the full flaps setting uh, for speed at 109 kilometers per hour, so we quickly regulate it on that speed. Uh, we start slowing down a little bit more. Uh, we drop our flaps to the mid position, down to 101, and once again, drop the flap position down to full flaps, uh, we turn from base to final, we're on short final. Now we're coming in at short final on a speed we've selected to be a typical approach speed, a little bit above stall. But at some point on short final, what we really want to do is we want to take control back of the throttle. We really don't want to land with the auto throttle enabled in case we have to go around or, or take any other action. And I think I told you that there are two ways to turn off the auto throttle. One is to flip the switch to the off position, but an easier way in this case is to bring up the throttle from zero. And if I bring the throttle up from zero, you'll remember that when we bring the throttle up and cancel the auto throttle, we get a beep and we see that blue arrow on the screen. So I'm gonna just bring my throttle stick up slowly and you'll see that I hear a beep and I see the blue uh, arrow. So what I do is on short final, as I'm coming down maybe you know 50 feet from the ground, I just slowly raise my throttle stick until I hear that beep. I don't have to look at the display. And I know at that point, I'll get the auto throttle canceled announcement. And I know that my throttle setting on my stick will exactly match the last throttle setting of the CTU. And then at some point, when I'm coming across the threshold of the runway, I, I might chop that all the way to zero or I might chop it part of the way, but I'm now back in manual control of the throttle, uh, just like a full-scale operation would do.